Hi, I'm Kinkas. Welcome to the channel. Today we're building the Danny Sound Multimode Ladder Filter Kit from Thonk. This 4-pole filter is based on the Moog Transistor Ladder, but adds bandpass and high-pass modes, a resonance CV input and bass compensation when using high resonance in low-pass mode. The input can be soft-clipped and features an attenuator to control the amount of saturation. The modes are accessible via a push button that toggles between them, and the selected mode is indicated by one of three amber LEDs with light pipes. Apart from the resonance CV input, there are two frequency CV inputs, each with an attenuator and indicator LED. The panel graphics and material are top-notch, and the knobs are nice classic Rogans, giving the module a bit of a vintage test equipment vibe. The filter is 6 HP wide and about 55 millimeters deep. The kit comes with all of the hardware and electronic components needed, including three PCBs, the panel, knobs, matched transistor pairs, a Tempco resistor for temperature stability, a Vactrol, the LED light pipes, metal standoffs, mounting screws, and the power cable. The illustrated PDF manual is ACE, follow it closely and you should have no problem building this filter. Let's start with the resistors. I like to plug them all in before I start soldering. Bending the leads close to the resistor body before plugging them in will make it easier. Once they were all in, I soldered them from the top. Then turn the boards around to trim the leads and touch up the soldering. I actually did this to all three boards at once, but we'll focus on the outer board now. Next are the white box capacitors. Some of the values look very similar, don't get these confused. These caps are not polarized. And now the electrolytic caps. These are polarized, make sure you plug them in the right way. Locate the matched transistor pairs, they come clearly labeled in the kit. Install these first. The voltage regulator looks just like a transistor. Plug it in as well. Now plug in the Vactrol. Make sure the slant on the Vactrol matches the drawing on the silk screen. The polarity is very important on this one. Now install the trim pod, followed by the power header. Make sure to orient the power header slot away from the PCB edge. I used my snake charmer technique on this one, so I could hold it on straight while soldering the first pin. Moving on, let's install the female headers. You have to cut them from the strip that comes in the kit. The way to do that is to count the pins you want and cut the very next one. You will always lose a pin with any cut, so purposely cutting the one right after the number you want ensures you have the right size header for each spot on the PCB. Solder just one pin on each one. Then use your fingers to push them flush to the PCB while reflowing the soldered pad. This will ensure they sit perfectly perpendicular to the PCB. Now solder the other pins. Moving on to the midboard, let's install the IC sockets. Make sure to line up the notch on each socket with the notch in the silk screen. I used the POTS PCB to hold the sockets down while I turned the board over for soldering. Then I soldered just two opposing corner pins on each socket to hold them in place before soldering all the rest. Now let's install the capacitors. Again, the white boxes have no polarity, but make sure you don't confuse the values. Remember, the electrolytics do have polarity. Now the transistors. Find the three matched pairs and plug them in. The pair of 2N3904 transistors face each other and should be installed so that they are touching.
On top of them goes the 1K Tempco resistor, also touching the transistors. This is to ensure thermal coupling. If you have some heatsink paste, you can dab some of that on there as well. On to the headers. Use the same technique as on the previous board. One pin per header first, straighten them out, and finish soldering. Just be careful with the male headers. Don't touch the one you're soldering. Remember, if it smells like chicken, you're doing it wrong. Now install the trim pots. Make sure the screws face outward toward the edge of the PCB or you won't be able to get to them for calibration. Snap the ICs into their sockets, making sure they are correctly oriented. All dots and notches face the same direction on this board. That's it for the middle board. Last one, the POTS board now. Since I've already soldered on the resistors, we'll skip to the two non-matched transistors. Then the female headers. Then the male headers. Now's a good time for the hex standoffs. Fasten them on with the included screws. Now before we place the hardware components, let's prepare the panel. Just plug in the included LED light pipes into their respective holes. Now we can go back to the board and plug in, but not soldered yet, the pots and tall trimmers. Now the switch, making sure the protruding line on the switch matches the drawing on the silk screen. Now insert the sockets and the LEDs, but don't solder them yet. First slip on the panel and finger tighten some of the nuts to hold it steady and flush. Make sure the LEDs are flush to the light pipes, then go ahead and solder everything. For the button, I used the snake charmer again, so I could push the button up with my finger while soldering. Now you can finish tightening all of the nuts and install the nice Rogan knobs. Attach the other two PCBs. Check the power for shorts and we're ready for testing and calibration. So let's see how to calibrate this thing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this again. I've already been calibrating this guy for a while, but I wasn't recording. So I'll walk you through what I did. The first thing you do is calibrate the point at which the resonance starts to self oscillate, right? So first you connect the output to your mixer so you can hear it. I have my tuner set up over here and we'll find an A or near an A, that's good enough. Now we can bring this spot to, we're supposed to bring this to about 60% like right there. And I've already done it. So you hear it only, it's only starting to self oscillate. And the way that I did that was adjusting this trim pot right up here, right? So if you go counterclockwise, if I go counterclockwise, it starts to really scream. If I go clockwise, it cuts off. So what you want is to just barely hear it start to oscillate at that point. And then any point beyond that, it just goes full on screamer mode. Okay, so that's the first calibration procedure, is just to make it so that it starts self-oscillating at A440, and at, because it'll change to a different frequency so when it starts to oscillate, but you set it to A440, and then put this at 60% and set the trim pot so that it just starts to oscillate right there. Okay. Now the next procedure is volt per octave calibration. So we'll go ahead and plug, turn that oscillation fully on, right? So now I'm going to plug in my keyboard 
to CV input 1 here and open up the attenuator all the way and find that A again. So I'm playing an A here. Now let's check two octaves above. And that's, uh, that's a little low. It's actually not too bad. Right, and the trim pot to adjust is this one over here. There we go. And doing this will make it so we can use it as an oscillator and also so that filter tracking, key tracking, is very accurate. Key tracking is when the filter cutoff frequency follows the frequency of the pitch of the oscillators. Uh, there we go. It's close enough to an A. And uh, that's a G, so we need to widen the gap. Right? So let's turn that trim pot. Here again. Let's tune that back down to an A. Oh, back up to an A rather. And then play the A up here. Ah, that's closer. Right? That's a G sharp, uh, a sharp G sharp. So it's getting there. Thing is, it's not really linear. So it'll, it'll depend on which octave you're playing, what the CV you're sending. So I'm going to consider this a successful calibration <laughs> of the volt per octave. But I don't really consider it that important for this filter. It's close enough that the filter tracking will work really well. And I can even use it within an octave if I find the right octave as an oscillator. So cool. Or just as a carrier oscillator, FM oscillator for noise effects and things like that. That was step two of the calibration. Continuing on, frequency calibration. To so still be in low pass, we have uh, resonance full up and frequency to 50%. That's what they want. So let's disconnect the keyboard now. And we'll bring the, the knob, the frequency knob, up to 50%. So 12 o'clock. Right? I'm more used to using the clock as a reference. Oh, and now we need an A440. Oh, and it's pretty close already. So we're going to just the frequency trim pot, which is the bottom most one, until we see that A in the tuner there. And there it is. It was just like a half turn of the trim pot. So 12 o'clock, A440. Bandpass and high pass filter calibration. So now we should connect a square wave. And we'll set the input about 60%, so it's not um, clipping yet. So we we'll should set the resonance to about 30% or 40%, like right there. And frequency full up. Okay. Oh, I need to turn that volume down. <laughs> so now I should adjust the bandpass trim pot. So the least amount of signal is audible. Yeah, when, but first we need to select bandpass, right? Well, already I don't hear anything. But let's have a look. Bandpass trim pot is the second trim pot from the top. Right. Yep. That's its position right there. There's like a sweet spot where if you pass either direction, you start hearing some of that sound. We select high pass filter, right? So one more press here. And we adjust, we do the same thing with the first trim pot here. And there it is. Totally dead. That's the high pass here. And the band pass. Cool. Nice. That's it for now. Make sure you check out my demo video for this module, as well as the build and demo videos for its sister module, the Looping VC ADSR. See you soon, and stay noisy.